Okay, start the same way. We're asked to find the limit, so we do that. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 of f. Okay, next thing we'd want to try and do is factor and divide. Um, from my experience, if they're going to have you factor, it's either going to be a really simple factoring, simple like the one we did a minute ago where we just pull out an x. Say again. Close. There's one other thing I would check for, two for Noah. I would check for a nice quadratic. A quadratic is, um, so examples of a nice quadratic would be something like, say, here. So this is a pretty basic quadratic. We have x squared, uh, some number times x, and then some number. So these are often factorable. I'd say about 99% of the time. I have seen a case where it wasn't, but it, most of the time it is. This is factorable. A lot of teachers call this a difference of squares. So watch for those. But on the one we're working, number 14, the complexity is too much. Like six, you know, x to the fifth. And I can't pull out an x because there's no x with that term. Similar on the bottom, there's no x with the six. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to factor it. I'm not going to force myself to factor it. Step two here is factor and divide if you can. It doesn't mean you can. Question. So we go straight to here. Find the left right limit. Um, so basically, you don't have to write what I'm about to write. I'm doing it for clarity. There was nothing else to do other than just start using the actual formula. So raise your hand, please, as I'm writing this. And tell me, what would you expect the numerator to equal if the value of x you pick is either slightly more or slice, slightly less than 0? Looking for hands. What's the value of the numerator if x is slightly more or slightly less than 0? There we go. Let's go to Trey Robinson. Okay. So Trey says you put in an x here that's really close to 0. This term will equal what, Trey? Uh, zero. Really close. Won't be exact because we're not plugging in exact. Uh, then how about here we plug in another close to 0. What will this term equal, Trey? Close to 0. Also close to 0. So you're getting close to zero, plus close to zero, which is? Almost zero. Almost zero. We're getting kind of tired of saying that, but <laughs> it is. Right. And then we say plus two is what, Trey? It's really close to two. Nicely said. Really close to two. Um, but in the limiting sense, that's going to be two. Uh, three points for Trey. Raise your hand if you were prepared to talk through that like I just talked with Trey. Two more. Cool. I have at the bottom what's happening there. Yeah. Oh yeah, please don't. Um, so why wouldn't you take a two out of the top? Oh, awesome. Three points for that. Uh, a two can absolutely be factored from the top. But then what I notice is I can't factor a two from the bottom. So unless I can factor top and bottom similarly, it doesn't usually help anything. So it wouldn't hurt anything. There's nothing wrong with it. I just don't see it's going to help. Right, so you kind of, you know, no big deal, either way is fine. But usually if I'm trying to factor so I can divide. Two more, please, Kim. I'm just assuming the bottom is the exact same. Negative same logic, exact same logic. So we get a negative six here, point for Caleb. Question. Please, no, say Yes, good. Good to go. Cool. Um, this is back to Ellie's question. She asked a minute ago. So now we've got to go find, uh, we can leave it like that. That's uh, kind of new for a lot of people. On the AP test, you don't have to reduce anything. Uh, that's, yeah. How do you all say facts? Yeah, facts. No caps. So, um, use that word right. I never can tell if I'm using slate. Like yeah, and you don't have to reduce it. No caps. So. Just leave it. Just leave it. So.
Mm -hmm. I started to pick up on your language and I feel like I'm very awkward. <laughs> it's like being in Brazil all over again. <laughs> you don't know what you're saying. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> questions. Yeah, you can just leave it. Just leave it. And actually, the best advice is, is don't simplify. Because here's the problem. If you try to reduce and you make a simple error and do it wrong, you actually take the point away. Like if you just leave it, you get the point. <laughs> you try to reduce and make an error, you lose the point. Exactly. So would negative one point still be right? Oh, absolutely. So either of these two answers is correct. But it's just better to stay with the It's safer just to stop. There's just no reason to keep going unless they give some other indication that you have to keep going. So either of these would be right, but if you mess it up, you'll lose the points. Um, okay, cool. We need to do this now. This is what I was saying, Ellie's question. Don't put an equal sign here. We're not doing the same thing. We're doing something new. We're doing F now of zero. Hands up. Who knows what goes inside the green box? Looking for hands. Waiting. What's going to go inside the green? Let's go Alicia Tom. Would be the same as the blue. Uh, nicely done. It's you know we're still using the same formula. The only thing we're doing different is instead of thinking of x being close to zero, now we can just say x is zero. But the result's going to become the exact same thing again. We're still going to get a two over a negative six. Uh, three points for Alicia. Who is prepared to talk through that one? Two more. Um, so our conclusion now is, that's why I kept going back to Ellie's question, and that's why I wanted to do this one, is the function is continuous. There's not a discontinuity. Um, so when you can't divide, do you, is that like kind of <laughs> so if you can't divide, like you can't factor out and divide, does that kind of a reason why it's continuous because you're not dividing by zero? I have to say kind of a reason. I can't say that I would guarantee that that would always right. work. Um, but that was definitely, you compared the two problems nicely. Like here, we couldn't divide, so we just kind of jumped in and started solving the problem. And we found that, oh, it doesn't make any difference whether x is close to 0 or actually equal to 0. We get the same thing. That's what says the function is continuous. Uh, you're remembering what we had done here. Get back to it. Where when we factored out the x, yes, we got the yellow box there. And that was the key difference was this factor is going to be undefined if x is 0. This factor is going to be 1 when x is close to 0. Other questions? Cool. Uh, that one's done.